Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom. Now and ever to the age of age, Amen. Today is the second Sunday of the blessed month of Tuba, and the gospel of today is a continuation of sorts of the events of the last couple of weeks. We celebrated the incarnation of the Logos, um, the Holy Nativity, the visitation of the Magi on the 29th of Kiak. We commemorated the flight of the Holy Family into Egypt last Sunday, um, as well as the martyrdom of the Holy Innocent Children, and then followed by the Feast of the Holy Circumcision on the eighth day, as Christ being the fulfillment of the Law of Moses. And um, this week we will celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, or the Theophany of the Lord, <clears throat> as well as um, many feasts. So, th so there's many feasts and events that happen um, during um, th this first month of, of, of the year. Um, <clears throat> and the gospel of today, as well as most of the gospels of this month, have the same theme of the manifestation of the Lord. Um, some, or people some say, well, that's the epiphany. Um, well, it's the same thing. Because the word epiphany and the word theophany means God revealing or manifesting himself to us um, as we see in, in the day that the Lord was baptized in the Jordan. <clears throat> um, so this theme of, of can be, can be uh, described as seeing God or God revealing himself to us. Um, <clears throat> and this is probably the verse that applies most to this time of year could be in uh, what we pray the, in the first hour, uh, the first chapter of the gospel according to St. John, uh, chapter uh, verse 14. Um, where he says, <clears throat> uh, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. So the word taking flesh and dwelling among us, that's the incarnation. And beholding his glory, that's kind of like the theme of, of all of these feasts that we see um, this month. <clears throat> uh, and so, we, in a sense, we become witnesses of the glory of God, of the transfiguration of the Lord. <clears throat> um, so how, how do we behold the glory of God? That's uh, an important question that, that we may ask. How can we grasp the timeless, the immeasurable, the incomprehensible, the infinite, the immortal God? <clears throat> um, simple answer, through the incarnation, because God took flesh. Before the incarnation, God was spirit. But when the Lord Jesus Christ took our form and took our nature, um, he blessed it not only outwardly, but, but with an ability for us to relate with him differently and more intimately. <clears throat> so the infinite took human core that we can touch him, see him, hear him, and know him. Uh, and this is a great mystery and a great blessing and a great grace for all of us. <clears throat> so the gospel of today speaks of how we behold the Lord um, in different ways because we move from Kiak to Tuba. Um, Kiak, the month of praise, Tuba, like we said, the month of revelation. So it starts with a woman in the crowd um, after the Lord giving lengthy discourse in the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 11. The woman says, blessed is the womb that bore you. Praise to the Holy Virgin. That's what we did last month, right? Um, <clears throat> and um, the Lord actually corrects her. He says, not only that, but what? Uh, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So here the Lord is giving us the first step on, on how to witness his glory, is to hear the word of God and keep it. So let's move from kiak to tuba. Let's move from praise to, to wisdom. Let's move from just the blessing of the Holy Virgin and Elizabeth and, and, and that holy family and all the blessed characters that, that we read in the gospel according to St. Luke to the blessing that God has given to the entire world through them. Right, um, <clears throat> so God offers His His uh, Himself to the whole world, and He desires to reveal Himself to each one of us. But we have some responsibilities on our end. Um, so the Lord says, "Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. the word of God has been um, manifested and um, has penetrated uh, various places all over the world through the centuries." And it's very easy to get in touch with the scriptures. Um, uh, that's the easiest part, is to hear the word of God. The harder part is to keep it. 
And and uh, this is similar to the, the theme a uh, couple months ago of the, when we uh, went in depth with the parable of the sower and the whole idea of the seed has to take root in my heart. Um, the word of God needs to, to be kept and very deep um, to bear fruit. Um, <clears throat> and um, sometimes we misuse, we misunderstand, we misinterpret, we misconceive the blessings of God and the word of God. And then we, we start saying, oh, it's because I don't have enough. I need more. Um, kind of like the person who, who works and gets an income and starts spending it on um, useless things, um, like just toys, candy, or whatever, um, and then says, I need more money. That's my solution. No, that's not the solution. The solution is to use your money wiser. So sometimes we go to God with the same attitude. We say, God, I need more. Like, no, you have you have all what you need. The problem is you're not using it wisely. Um, <clears throat> as St. Paul says to the Corinthians, you are already full. You are already rich. You have reigned as kings. Um, <clears throat> and and then he says, we are fools for Christ, but you are wise. We are weak, but you are strong. We are distinguished. Sorry, you are distinguished, but we are dishonored. So he's comparing here the life of the apostle or the servant compared to the Christian who gets all the blessings um, without um, <clears throat> without at least struggle in the beginning. Um, we'll get to, that's this, actually the second point. <clears throat> so again, the first point is to hear the word of God and keep it. The second one is is to struggle because um, the Lord, after giving this responsibility, starts giving examples of uh, different people in the Old Testament uh, scripture who um, heard the word of God and kept it and who struggled. Um, <clears throat> so he says to when there's a great multitude pressing about him, um, instead of giving a positive message, he starts to say, this is a wicked and evil generation and it seeks a sign and no sign will be given to it except for the scriptures, except for Jonah. Why Jonah? Because he's a type of Christ as he was in the belly of the fish, as we know, for three days. Uh, it's a, a reminder of the death and resurrection of the Lord. <clears throat> so we shouldn't ask a sign from God um, to believe in him or not. He has already given us plenty of signs, plenty of uh, uh, prophecies, uh, plenty of words to teach us. The problem is maybe we don't go deeper in enough into the scripture um, and to keep. <clears throat> so one of the fathers, St. Ammonius in the 5th century, he says, how do we behold his glory? He said, we beheld it through the star of the Magi, the angels, the shepherds, Anna, the prophetess, Simeon, the elder, Gabriel, the archangel, the miraculous birth of the virgin, the voice of the father who witnessed him. So he's going actually through all of the things and feasts that we celebrated um, in the last month or two. Um, the spirit descending upon him, and he's talking about the epiphany here, um, and many other signs. So this is how we behold the glory of God. Um, not necessarily for an angel to appear to us, um, but and in a sense, as St. Paul says, we, we don't need that. We are already, um, we already full, we are already rich. Um, <clears throat> so what to do? Um, like we said, the first point is to hear the word of God and keep it. And the second point is to struggle and repent. So he gives the example here of the queen of the South. She, she traveled, and he says, um, she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, um, as we know the story. And when she saw the wisdom of Solomon, and she saw the, the, um, the joy and the wisdom even of his servants, and even how they, they looked, um, she was amazed and impressed. How much more should we um, be amazed and impressed? Because she's, the Lord says, what, a greater than Solomon is here himself. Um, so, if God forbid on the judgment day, uh, God puts the queen of the south and and us right next to her, we will be. Uh, there's no comparison. How, how much did so? The question is, how much did I struggle to find the wisdom of God compared to her? Of course, all of us are put to shame. Um, but then I need to ask myself: Am I struggling enough? Am I reading enough? Am I keeping it enough? How much? How often? Am I searching for the answers to my questions, or do I just put it aside and say, no, the Bible is too difficult for me? Um, so 
So that's the, the struggling part. The repentant part, the Lord gives the second example of the men of Nineveh who rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. Um, we know the story and probably we even know the details of how um, Jonah and the Ninevites were from two different countries, two different beliefs, and they disliked each other. So, so imagine an enemy coming who is of the different faith as, as you from a different country, um, someone that you despise, come and telling you what God is saying to repent. Um, most of us would probably just kick him out and beat him up or maybe even kill him. But what did they do? They listened, they obeyed, they repented um, in sackcloth and ashes for, for, for days. And um, just one simple message that he gave, um, they took it to heart, um, even their animals. <clears throat> so we don't need to seek a sign. Um, if you remember the parable of the Lord, of, of Lazarus and the rich man, right? Um, he dies and realizes that he's a sinner, and he made a big mistake. He said, well, I have five brothers. I need to warn them, right? So he, he asks um, of God and of a the patriarch Abraham, uh, go, go to my father's house. I have five brothers. Um, testify them ab about this place of torment. And he, and he says to them, they have Moses and the prophets. They have the scriptures. They don't need an angel to appear to them. Um, he says, no, 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 but if someone comes to them um, from the dead, they will repent. So his, even his understanding is that sometimes we say, if a miracle happens to me or God reveals to me or even an angel comes and says, do this, maybe I will listen. According to this, God says, no. He says, if they don't hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. So we are already full, already rich. We already have the beautiful scriptures. And if it doesn't have an effect on us, then even if an angel appears to me, that might not have an effect on me either and might be even a source of judgment. That's why God, um, in his mercy, um, refrains from, from uh, appearing to us in this way and giving messages in this way, because then even if we don't listen to that, that's more condemnation for us. <clears throat> so that's why when we read the scriptures, one of the big messages that we get is to repent. Um, so if we don't hear the word of God and keep it with repentance, then no miracle, no sign, no earthquake, um, nothing will be convinced convince us of, of repentance. So that's why we have to start with and continue with the word of God. <clears throat> uh, so that's the second point. The last point, the Lord starts to speak about the lamp of the body. What does he say the lamp of the body is? It says, no one when he has lit a lamp puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on lampstand that those who may come in may see the light. The lamp of the body, he says, is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is also full of your eye. Um, <clears throat> so St. Cyril explains this by saying, um, God wants all of us to see him uh, in his light. Um, and he w and what is this light? He says, this is the true knowledge of God. Okay? Um, and as again, as St. Paul says, the light shines in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God and peace of Christ. So the light here is, is knowing God better um, and seeing God with the eyes of our heart. And, and this is the, the revelation of glory that we were talking about before. Um, so the light comes when God reveals himself to us, when we understand more about um, the, the deep mysteries of God. And this comes from the, the person who desires. So if we kept the scriptures that we have heard, and if we struggle with repentance, then the next step is revealing God, revealing his glory to us, like with Moses. And some people say, oh, that's what I want, but I don't want to go through the first two steps. It, it, that's not how God works. Um, so if we want it en enough, then, uh, and we struggle for it, then God will uh, give us that blessing. Uh, as again, St. Cyril says, he did miracles that we might believe that although he is not God by nature, he became man for our sakes. Um, so although God is God by nature, he wanted to become man and, and perform miracles so that 
he gives light to our minds and fills them with divine knowledge. <clears throat> so um, the, I, we can go maybe more in depth in this at uh, another time, but um, the light, like His Holiness mentioned in, in his message, pastoral message uh, of the Nativity Feast, he said the light gives hope, the light gives joy, the light gives purity and holiness. Um, and this is God's interaction with us um, in, on a personal level. Um, so may, to conclude, may the Lord give us this, this great manifestation of his glory um, after we have struggled a little to repent, to hear the word of God, and to keep it. Glory be to him now and to the